what's up, Stark here. And today I'm going to go over, I guess, sort of motion vectors, but specifically with motion blur. And I'm doing this just because uh, I found there was some confusion on my last tutorial using motion vectors. So this one I think is a good one to use it to explain it. It's better because you could actually see what is happening with using motion vectors. And this is typically how most of the time motion vectors are used. And it's just to render out a pass which will do motion blur. So right here I have it. This isn't rendered with motion blur. I just did this. I mean, there's interpenetrating stuff, but it's just a simple thing of just teapots dropping down, right? So as you can see, there's blur, all right? And if I turn off what it's using, it's off, all right? And what's neat about doing it this way is you could dial in how much or how little you want. So if you want to make it realistic or not, you could do that. Uh, I want to go over a few different gotchas and things you might run into. And I'm going to start off with a motion vector. Okay, so here is a motion vector. And if you, I know if you watch the shark one, it's not as obvious as this guy. Uh, so this one's super obvious. And the reason these things are all changing colors is because what's happening is embedded in this pass is direction. Okay, now here's something that is kind of confusing me, and maybe if someone has an answer, this is straight from Real Smart Motion Blur's documentation. They have it to where they're saying the more red, if you look up here, you can see there's nothing in the green channel. That will account for the the x axis. Okay, so so we can show you x, okay, y. However, it seems to be reading it the opposite to where it's reading the red as the Y channel and the green is the X. So I'm not sure what that's about. And it's not, uh, sometimes you have to switch the channels around depending where you're coming from. And that doesn't seem to be the case with this because it actually still displays it correctly. So I'm not sure what that is. That's their documentation for how it works internally. So I, I don't know what to tell you on that front. but. As you can see, and the reason I just have it dropping is because you can see how it's really obvious that as it's coming straight down, these guys are completely red. There is no uh, lateral movement or side to side movement at all. So it's completely red. Okay. Now, once you see it hit the ground and bump. Okay. So like watch this guy right here, how it kind of goes to the side. Okay. As it starts going sideways. Okay, you're going to start introducing the green and there's still red in there. So we could go in. So for instance, let's go here. Let's go to the green channel. See how it's completely black. Nothing there. Go to the red channel. There's stuff there. Okay. Now. Go to here to where it's going sideways. That guy. Go to the green. You'll see that it's lit up. Because these guys are now, they have a, a uh, X position movement. Okay. So that's really all there are to motion vectors. And I, the one thing I would say is if you are rendering them out, do it, do it with um, alpha because it will take that into account. And I actually have a shadow pass on the ground. And the reason that's there is because there's still movement in it. Even though it's a shadow, there's still movement going on so i still want blur on that but this is why as you can see that it starts to settle kind of as it's dropping and settling down it kind of hits this half and half area to where it's it's sort of a neutral zone okay so now i made this i'm going to call this the blur comp okay because i want to go over some different ways you could i guess if you don't have real smart you could introduce motion blur but these are not ideal but i'm still going to go over it so you have uh cc force motion blur and this is incredibly slow okay and um this goes based off the shutter angle so let's just do like a 90 and bring it down you can see that you're getting tearing now what this does is the motion blur samples is the more samples you have the smoother it, but I mean, it's still the problem is it's just it it's doing whatever After Effects 
thing is, I'm pretty sure this force motion blur is pretty old. Okay, and uh, native motion blur would just take into account like if this thing was moving too. So there's that. All right, and then we're gonna have this one. Let's okay. We'll go in order of real smart motion blur. So the one I showed at the beginning is using this and I'll show you the difference. So I want to go to, I marked this frame 33 and this is a, a problem that seems, I mean, it happens because what it's doing is real smart motion blur. A lot of people just plop this on and I do it too if I don't have a pass or something, but just bring our sensitivity, maybe like 0.25. But you can see right here what's happening is it's trying to essentially create it's it's tracking the pixels and it's trying to just figure out the direction and then blurring it itself, okay? So that's where using a motion vector pass comes in because instead of it trying to figure this out, it's literally saying this pixel right here is moving this way, blur it this direction. Okay, that's what motion vectors are doing. All vector, vector, first of all, the word vector just means a direction with a magnitude. So which way and how much, okay? And that's what these guys are doing, okay? So this is one. Now, the last guy I'm going to tell you is this vector blur. And this is kind of, I'm sort of tricking you here because uh, I think because it's called vector blur, it throws people off because what it's doing is it's it's not reading the it's not meant to do what the other ones do okay so what it's actually doing is it's gonna solo this out it's reading this gradient okay and that's what it means by vector blur is you're kind of I'm, I'm telling it to use um oh let me go back to vector blur so i'm telling it to use the a certain channel and I'm just saying use luminance okay so where it's white is going to be where it's or the brightest part is going to be where it is most extreme and then where it's black darkest is where it's going to be the least extreme so what's happening here is let's turn on vector turn this guy off and then vector blur you could see yeah up top here it's cool and all that, but then you can also see it's starting to introduce this artifacting. And we could actually just, I don't know, let's scatter the ramp. You can start seeing these little artifacts coming in. Uh, and then here's a better example. So we'll just put this guy here and this guy here. And you can see that behind it, let's go, see how it's black? There's no blur. So it's saying here, note, don't introduce any blur, but where it's white, introduce blur. Now, if you had something to where it was a completely linear type thing, or you could get away with, I don't know, just getting the shape, drawing it out, this would be cool, but it's not the same as the other. So I would kind of stay away from that. Now, uh, there is one more thing I want to show you just to really point this out, which is to essentially what's happening again, which kind of explained it, but oops, why not? So we'll go in and do it. So we'll go to our, just this layer, and then we're just going to do motion blur. Okay. This isn't actually the one I want to do. Uh, honestly, I would stay away from optical flow. It's like a neat technology, but clearly, as you can see, it's yeah. So effect blur, I meant to do directional blur. And I'm going to turn this thing up to something high, okay? Now, this might be tricking you because right now it's just going straight up and down. And essentially what you could look at vector blur is doing again is remember how I said it's telling it to do it. So, or which direction and how much. So right here, oh, this would work fine because, all right, let's go to, one is it sorry getting lost in my comps okay so yeah that's cool it's saying blur length 10 all right but once it gets here now you have parts that are falling and then parts over here that are this way but you can see and they're not moving as much and that's sort of what 
you could look at this as like each pixel is getting a little directional blur of value. Okay, so all the way across, and then this thing is telling it to do that. So, oh, which direction and how much? That's what the vector's doing. So I kind of, it's redundant what I said, but I just wanted to go over it one more time. So now getting to using the motion vector and I want to go to, I, I did this mark right here because I want to show you the difference between just using it uh, like tracking wise. And you can see this weird shape here and then the difference between doing it this way. So let's go to frame 33 and what we'll do is a split view. Okay, so new viewer, block this, unlock this guy, go here. All right, and you can see that it's superior because again, this guy has to guess it. The, the other one where you just put real smart motion blur pro has to guess where it's going, where this one is reading the directions. Okay, so I'm just gonna set it up. And it, the thing is, it's so simple. And you get these from either creating them. However, I think if you do create it, like in that shark example, you're going to get kind of something hit or miss um, just because it depends on the, your source material. That's what happens where in 3D, you could literally, it's everything is there, all the information. So it's just writing it out. So I will just go here. Let me unlock. Okay. And... We'll just reset this and you'll see that it turns red, okay? It's turning red because it has no vector. So this is different. So effect revision, okay, uh, pro vectors. And the reason it's saying it's showing as red is because we're not giving it any vector. So let's give it a vector. Now you're gonna see the default is terrible. And what's really odd too is that, so I'm in 16 bit and it recommends max displace at 2048 all right i don't know what that's about i've never done that so i tend to stick to like five and even the max displace something i do really low numbers and then start putting it up and if you're this does actually help if your gpu supports it and you'll start seeing that you're getting a more natural thing now the caveat is it's not going to be perfect okay not going to be perfect so you will get some little tears and you could you kind of have to balance it out because it's going to be the more blurry you want the more likely it's going to tear and that's just it's what comes with it however it is more accurate than just plopping it on top okay so i'm going to turn this back up to five all right and then we'll just ram preview this I'll just... and for the most part you can see it's not noticeable you don't really see the tearing or flickering Okay, and then we'll go back to the blur comp and I wanna fit this one where, let's see if uh, sensitivity. Okay, so here is just applying it on top. And I, the thing that I noticed right off the bat is that it's, it's a little bit too extreme and then you'll watch this end part here. Watch this guy. And you're getting this because what's happening is it's tracking the next frame and there is no next frame. Okay, so you could do previous, which in this case I would because it, there's nothing on the frame, but we want to track the next frame. So in general, if you could do motion vectors, do it. It's not extremely noticeable unless cases like this, but then you have to kind of plan for it. So that's really about it. That's all it is. I hope this kind of clears up the other tutorial and I hope I kind of beat a dead horse enough so that you guys really understand how it works. So I hope this helped you guys out. I hope this cleared it up and I'll talk to you guys later.